Dom here from Essential RC. Thanks for tuning in for another flight test. Now surely if you fly EDF jets you should have an F-16 in your hangar. If not then maybe this is for you. This is the 70mm EDF uh, F-16 from our friends at FMS. Um, a few features of this I will uh, tell you about before I unbox it. Um, it comes with an 80 amp Predator speed controller and a 1900 kV uh, is it outrunner or inner runner? inner in runner motor on a 12 blade fan back in the day a few a few years ago we used five and six blade fans what gave this really high pitch um, sound uh, particularly on a, on a flyby quite high pitch sounding thing not very realistic now the move to these high blade cow fans, 12 blade gives you this really deep, nice tone. Sounds almost like a real turbine as it, as it flies by. So it's great they've done that. Has a button type canopy hatch, uh, pre-installed newly designed ball link style control horns for more throw. Not just more throw, but real precision of movement when you move the sticks. Because if you've had models where it's had a Z bend through on the control rod, push rod, through the servo onto a clevis that snaps onto the horn on the control surface there's always a little bit of slop on that type of connection and with ball links absolutely zero zero slop as we call it zero movement so uh, that makes for really precise flying by you on the stick so it's good that they've done that it comes with five different sets of stickers so you can customise what it looks like. And although they don't mention it on the feature list on the back, I can see from the pictures that it comes with retractable landing gear. I'm surprised at that, considering the size. Normally they sacrifice the weight of the land retractable landing gear um, because it adds so much weight to a smaller model and you, it's either with fixed landing gear or no landing gear and you have to, have to hand launch it. So I would suspect because of this high power four cell setup on the EDF system, they've included that because it can it can take the weight because it's it's powerful enough to cope with it. Anyway, let's not hang around. Let's take the components out of the box. Let's see what we get. So just before I unbox all the components out of the carton, just showing how it's all packed, I think it's worthwhile doing this because you want to know when you spend your money that when it gets shipped to your door, while it's in transit, nothing is gonna get damaged. And that's always the way with FMS models. They, there's one guy in their team that designs these cartons so that they are, one, it's very tightly packed and nothing can move around while it's in transit. So again, I would like to meet that guy one day. He does an excellent, excellent job of uh, designing these cartons so is in pristine condition when it gets to you. But anyway, let's unpack it now and see what how many components we've got. Okay, so we have all the components laid out on the table. It didn't take very long to unbox. Starting with the fuselage, that's the most interesting bit. So at the front you can see the nose cone is not attached, but we push it on and it is held on by a magnet. Then the canopy latch at the back slots in at the front. Take that off. We've got a pilot in the office. Excellent. Not always the case with some manufacturers, but FMS always do that. Good job, because it looks terrible without a pilot when you're flying. Uh, and then we've got the the battery goes here. We've got some Velcro we can attach to the back to the battery to hold it in place with two nice straps. We've got the Reflex version two gyro stabilization system. I'll have to change the plug for an XT60 or an XT90, so that's what I use. That's an EC5, isn't it, I think? So good to standardize on what you use, but um, easy to solder on a different plug or use a, uh, an adapter if you have one. Then we've got all the cables out of the gyro stabilization system to go into your receiver. I'm gonna be using an FR Sky X8R more channels than I need but I kind of standardize on that receiver now and we'll program it up using my Radio Master TX16S or actually I might use my Radio Master Boxer 
one or the other, but they're both very good radios. Uh, moving to the back, so uh, we don't have the wings attached, but it looks like we've got a servo connector there for the wings, and the wings are here. So you can see that the aileron servo is in place and already hooked up via the ball link for precision onto the horn on the aileron. So uh, we've got a wing joiner carbon tube to put through the fuselage first before we slot on the wings and two bolts to hold them in place. And we've got the vertical stabilizer uh, rudder to drop in and connect up the rudder servo to the lead here. Uh, then we've got the uh, horizontal stabilizers, elevators. We'll have to connect those up to the servos that are on the fuselage underneath, I would assume. And we've got some strakes uh, to put underneath, which is what all F-16s have. Let's just turn it over and have a look underneath. So you can see the elevator servos there. We've got uh, a cheetah hole, which is protected with this grill, so it can the fan can suck in more air than it needs. And then we've got the landing retractable landing gear and nose gear there as well. No gear doors, which is nice. They just add a bit too much complexity sometimes. So that's good. Looks really nice. So for certain this is not going to take too long to put together, it will probably take more time to uh, apply the stickers that I choose. And I'm going to do that now and show you what it looks like all assembled. And here it is all assembled, really really easy. Uh, the glue is still drying on the vertical and horizontal stabilizers, those get glued in place. Uh, you bolt the wings on, two bolts on either side and canopy and nose cone and the missiles which get slid onto the wings <laughs> Ow, and the uh, strakes which are glued underneath super easy um, just say that the little hardware pack that contains the four uh, bolts for the wings and the the push rods for the elevators it's a very small bag and it's hidden away in the box so just make sure you look carefully for that it is in there i thought it was missing but um, they do hide it away in a little compartment in the uh, polystyrene box so just make sure you search for that before you throw it away taking the canopy off oh and incidentally i use yoohoo pour glue i don't use uh super glue i think super glue is a little bit well not as certainly not as flexible as a Yoohoo pour, which is a contact adhesive. That's why I prefer to use foam to foam. But uh, so you can see here, I've got my uh, FR Sky X8R programmed it up on my TX16S from Radio Master. The Reflex version two system has an S bus S bus uh, lead out of it, so that's what I have used to plug into the X8R S-Bus plug uh, for the primary control surfaces and then I just need to plug in one other lead and, and that was for the, the landing gear which does not go through the reflex box you just put that straight into the X8R so only two leads changed over the plug to uh, an XT60 because that's my standard plug that I use on all my LiPos and a 4S3300 is recommended but I don't have one of those so I'm going for a 4000 slightly heavier but that's the I've marked the CG position for 105 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing there now I tell you one other tip what I do is when I get to the flying field so I have so many models I, I forget where the land where the uh, CG mark is and I want to be able to balance the model underneath on my fingertips and reach and feel for something that marks it. So I use these little map pins. Just put a dab of Yoohoo Paw on the uh, the sharp end and 
push those into the foam, one of those into the foam on either side of the wing underneath so that I can uh, balance it at the field, double check that I've got the right balance point because it is very, very critical with jets that you do have them balanced properly in the range that they recommend and FMS do normally get it, get it right, I have to say. Uh, show you quickly the setup on, on this, so I've created a new model. Change the name, I'll have a timer going up on SF switch. And uh, so these are the inputs. So you, you, when you create a new model, you get aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder as standard. And I just uh, copy the line down uh, twice for each control surface, but then set the weight to 100%, 66% and 33%. And on the SA switch up, middle and down so that I've got three position rates all on the same switch. Why do I do that? Because at slow speed I want high control deflection and at faster speeds I want lower deflection and I can adjust accordingly and to the type of aerobatics I'm going to be doing and I put 30% expo on each as well so there's just less movement in the middle, middle of, of the stick. Um, scrolling down I get my hand out of the way. Then you can see on this gear, I put that into channel five, and then the mode for the uh, reflex system, which is going to go on a three position switch on SC, but it's on channel seven. Going across, you can see I've mapped that on mixes, and that's it, nothing more to do than that. And I flipped it upside down just to show you the retractable landing gear. So steerable nose wheel, obviously coordinated with uh, the rudder stick. And then there you go. Amazing. I think that looks really good. So going to whiz down to the flying field and get this in the air for the first time. All right, so here we are down the flying field with the 70 millimeter F16 from FMS, ready to go. <laughs> One thing I will admit, I had a nightmare with the decals for this. They are decals, decals, I'm gonna call them decals, but they're the normal water slide type and then you apply them after soaking them, uh, apply them, which went okay, but then there's a film on top you're supposed to remove afterwards and when I did that, they just, they just came off. So. I don't know what I did wrong there. I think maybe they need to be soaked for much, much longer. But I would prefer just normal sticky back stickers, to, to be honest. They, it would be like we had on the missiles here. Um, but the water slide ones just did not work for me. But I, I, can, I can buy some others off eBay, I, I guess, if I want to decorate it. Anyway, let's see how well it flies. So the bumps in our flying field certainly did not help. <laughs> but, but it got off quite easily actually. It got off. wasn't too bad. Given that tiny little nose wheel on grass, quite impressive. It's quite quick. Really quick, yeah. Over the top. So this with a 6S 4000, which is bigger than the recommended, as they say 33, so longer flying time, but the pack had to go right back. I had to move my receiver to get anywhere close to the CG. It moved around quite nicely. I'm not going to worry about the uh, reflex gyro system on this flight.
Oh, canopy's come off. The pilot has ejected. That was your landing, Dom. You scared him off. <laughs> okay, let me go. So, there you go. Um, but it, it flew fine, on it? But it flew, it yeah. flew fine. Uh, slow pass was nice and um, got the, the nose up for uh, landing and actually the elevator is in neutral position and it flew fine so I'd say the CG is good. Really, really, really fun to fly. <laughs> the only thing is the, the, the stickers, the decals. Uh, I can buy some off eBay to make it look a bit more scale. But otherwise that's it. This is the 70mm EDF F16 from FMS. The link is in the video description and the pinned comment. Look it up uh, on the link. If you enjoy our flight test, then maybe subscribe. Click the bell icon for notifications of our uploads and live streams. And give us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate that. Thanks to Jason on camera. No problem. And we'll be back soon on Essential RC.